In this uh, video, we're going to look at SMEs, small to medium sized enterprises. Now, Bridge and O'Neill, um, the writers of 2009, quote uh, the Bolton Report of 1971 in terms of the definition of SMEs. And I'll just mention here that the Bolton Report of 1971 is probably one of the seminal works in the study of small to medium sized enterprises. It's a government report in the UK, but it's um, it's a very important report because it uh, made the business community and government aware of the importance of small businesses. And it was the first really major report into the functioning of small businesses. So firstly, a small firm is one that has a rel relatively small share uh, of its market. So a small firm, generally speaking, has a small share of the market. So if the market is 100%, that is the total market, uh, a small firm, uh, maybe one of many who share that market, will therefore have a small share of the market. Secondly, an essential characteristic of a small firm is that it is managed by its owners or part owners in a personalised way and not through the medium of a formalised management structure. So small firms tend to have owners' involvement. The owners are involved perhaps as managers or as as the uh, CEO or as the the, the, the owners are involved. It may be, if it's a very small firm, that the, the owner is also the only employee. Th that would make it an extremely small firm. But small firms tend to have owner participation. That's the point. Thirdly, it is also independent in the sense that it does not form part of a larger enterprise and that the Owner managers should be free from outside control in taking their principal decisions. Large organisations may be controlled centrally from uh, from the central office, and there will be various layers in the decision-making process, ranging from the the CEO through to um, senior management, departmental heads, uh, review bodies. So decision making tends to be quite slow and um, very well worked out, but at the same time very slow in its delivery. Whereas in small business, decision making can be very fast because the owners are present and there is no elaborate bureaucracy. There is no elaborate structure through which the decision must, must flow. And in that sense, the owner-manager is much more flexible and much faster in making decisions. The main characteristics of small businesses, well, independent entity owned solely by the owners. There are no shareholders, there are no outside influences, so they are independent businesses. The owner owns the business. I appreciate that's stating the obvious, but <coughs> the owners are the only uh, investors in the business. The owners are the only uh, ones who, who make the decisions. I'm not quite right by saying that they're the only investors. It could be banks and other institutions may have lent money to the, the business and will have a vested interest in the business also. But it's the owners who have overall control of the business. Finance and capital is provided by the owner or a small group of owners. Sometimes in small businesses, the owner may mortgage his or her property, his or her home, in order to set up the business. Um, they may put their life savings into the business. So, uh, it's generally speaking, the finance and capital is provided by the owner. The business tends to be local and business operations take place on a local or national level. But when I say national, it may be wider local. 
maybe regional as opposed to, to national. So business tends to be quite small and localised. Um, the business, of course, may be supplying specialised components to large companies who have outsourced it to the business. But <clears throat> generally speaking, small businesses tend to deal with local markets, local people, local communities, and supply services and goods through those markets. Employees of the business live local within the community. Generally speaking, there tends to be a, a family atmosphere in small businesses, very much a, a local concern, local interests, and um, a knowledge of the local area. So the employees and the managers are <clears throat> familiar with the local circumstances. The size of the business will be smaller in industrial markets compared to larger organizations. So <clears throat> generally speaking in industrial markets where perhaps lots of capital is, requ are, is required I should say to, um, uh, to engage in production smaller companies can't afford that <coughs> excuse me smaller companies can't afford uh, that amount of capital so therefore, uh, small companies tend to remain small. They may grow slowly over a period of time, but uh, they pick up uh, niches. They pick up um, work that perhaps the larger companies uh, don't want or are not prepared to, to work on, commit resources to. Um, they may target uh, local communities and uh, local requirements. So it may be um, a builder's company who's, who's owned by uh, a local person supplying building services to the local community. They're not in competition with the large building uh, companies who provide large office blocks and motorway uh, facilities. These are small businesses aimed at uh, particular markets. The size of the business is measured in terms of sales volume, profit, growth, number of employees, core competencies, uh, resources and capital. And therein lies the problem. We're not too sure how to measure a small business. Um, if we measure it by profit, well, some small companies may be extremely profitable. They may have very few workers, but they use a lot of computer technology and generate a lot of profit. So on one measure, on one metric, the profit one, it's a large company. In terms of number of employees, it's very small. We have got problems in measuring small business. Sometimes we're not sure exactly what we mean by small business. We have, generally speaking, rules of thumb uh, related to this. We might say a small business is under 20 workers. Um, but as I said earlier, that small business could be struggling, whereas an even smaller business on that metric, perhaps a company with just five workers, may be making quite considerable profits because it's using capital, uh, such as computer um, facilities, to generate the profit. So measuring uh, businesses is, is a problem. We, we feel like we know what a small business is, but it's difficult to define. Now, the benefits and challenges of SMEs. Well, for start, the management structure. Small businesses lack management structure. Control remains with the owner or a small group of people. Um, that's good in one sense because decisions are made quickly. Unfortunately, it could also be bad because the decisions may be bad decisions because the person making it has to oversee the whole business and will therefore not have an expertise in all areas. Whereas a management structure will have specialists in place 
in each of the departments. So small businesses lack management structure and that may be a downfall. On the other hand, because it doesn't have the, the management structure, is able to make decisions fast and it, it can be very uh, swift in its uh, decision making. Limiting control can avoid conflict and enable uh, the business to make effective decisions and avoid meetings and procedures in a large management structure. So if there are fewer people involved in management, there will be less conflict. And of course, as I said, more effective decision making, faster decision making. Unfortunately, the quality of the decision making may be suspect, as I said earlier, because perhaps just one or two people are making the decisions, whereas in a larger business, the management structure will be such that there will be an expertise in each of the departments. So better quality decisions can be expected. One owner may not be skilled or experienced in every element of the business. Lacking in knowledge can have a negative effect on the business. And that's what I've been saying in the previous two points as well. That the owner may not have an expertise in all parts of the business. Uh, the owner may not be skilled in using certain machinery or in completing certain tasks uh, and therefore is disadvantaged both in decision making and in terms of operations and operations planning. So that can have a negative effect on the business. The benefits and challenges of SMEs, well learning opportunities most owners of small businesses learn on the job and acquire their skills and knowledge through experience from self-employment. Now it's, this is seen as quite positive. The people who learn on the job have got uh, in-depth knowledge. They have experience of doing it. They've learned by reflecting on tasks from the past. and They carry that experience and therefore uh, they're more adept at running the business, or so it's said. Um, that's, that's fine, except sometimes technology may change, which will disadvantage the owner whose skills was with a previous generation of technolo uh, technology. So there are issues about that. There are issues about the uh, usefulness of learning on the job. It's a slow process. It does take time. Uh, it does absorb energy to learn on the job, to make notes, make observations, learn by doing, uh, develop the, the fix that's required on the job to ensure continuity of production, making notes, reflecting on it. So it does sap time and energy. It's not free. But on the other hand, it's argued that it's, it's a very reliable way of learning. Unless, as I said a moment ago, unless the technology changes, in which case there is a problem. Business owners may have deep knowledge within their field. However, lack a broad, objective view of the business. Hence, more people are needed to bring in new experience and talent. Sometimes small businesses may almost ossify. They, they get fixed. The owner knows how to do a particular task and has a traditional way of doing it and the business becomes set in its ways. Meanwhile, its competitors will perhaps employ new technology and will engage in training and uh, prepare its staff for uh, new ways of working and therefore the competition uh, will lead to uh, quite a destructive impact on the more traditional business who will eventually perhaps go out of business. Informal systems and procedures. Well many small businesses do not put formal procedures in place 
as they are run by one person or a small group of people. So they don't have, perhaps, formal procedures. They don't have documentation. They don't have uh, procedures that must be followed sequentially. And they may also be weak on certain areas like health and safety and uh, uh, current law on employment. So they may have lots of issues associated with... uh, at running the business and the reason for that is that one person is trying to do too much trying to be an expert in all areas it benefits the organization as everything is focused on one business goal the business goal might be to make profit or to survive depends on what the goal is but Uh, Larger businesses with a departmental structure and with a management team may be able to make better decisions and are, in in a sense, more capable of adopting technology and uh, adopting new practices and being aware of what's happening in the market and, and hence more flexible, paradoxically, compared to the, the smaller business, who we would expect to be very flexible because... Uh, they're able to make decisions fast. Formal procedures tend to come into place when the business makes rapid growth. This makes it difficult for employees and management to implement control as there is an informal culture. So sometimes when, when the business is growing and it's difficult to control the business just the owners involved the business is starting to grow more employees are required and new premises and new technology and new equipment now the the owner is under stress to try and manage all of this and therefore the organization has uh, the choice to fail because it's unlikely one person can control all of it. Or alternatively, expand, employ uh, new personnel with new expertise and new ways of working. Investment. Well, capital investment into the business tends to be the owner's personal savings. Now, that will limit the the size of the business, clearly, Um, If the business is a partnership, more capital could be raised. Uh, If it's a small limited company, a private limited company, then even more capital could be raised. So it depends. Generally speaking, small businesses have small amounts of capital and as such may not have the most appropriate equipment to do the job. They may struggle to find the right equipment because the right equipment costs so much. Um, the The balance between workers and machinery may not be appropriate. They may be reticent to take on workers for fear of having to make them redundant later. Um, they, there's much more um, uncertainty about the, the future of small businesses. Sometimes there is a reluctance to invest and expenses are restricted to bare essentials. Uh, They're reluctant to invest because they're not sure, they're not confident about the future of the business. They're not confident about what they've heard about the way the market is changing and the pressures from globalization and Um, government taxation and uh, employment law. All of these things impact on the small business to a considerable extent and may put them off. Tends to be more focus on short-term gains rather than long-term strategy. Small businesses tend to go for the short-term they don't really commit themselves to long-term strategy. Uh, They work for short-term gains. They try to get the orders in, complete the orders, 
invoice the uh, the buyers and get the get the cash flowing through the system but there's no big corporate decision making or strategy which is going to uh, position the, the business in a certain way or aim at some particular corporate goal down the line so what they tend to do instead is go for orders as soon as they can get the orders complete the orders and go for some more orders and after that it's uh, there is no there's no emphasis on uh, on strategy so these are some of the issues confronting small to medium sized enterprises well worthwhile stopping the video from time to time making your own notes and doing additional research on the topic it's become a very important topic in business and management education so that's the reference I mentioned at the outset and with that we'll conclude the video and say um, that's all we're going to deal with here so thank you for watching